Battlefield. Like, it's just... Everyone's known Fox and Four Battlefield. Like, that is the right. thing. And, like, you know, there's a lot more stage variety, like, we have. Because in SoCal, we do all, all seven stages right from the get-go. Uh, not Genesis rules. Uh, hey! So... Uh, one thing is, I was like, why didn't he take him to Kalos or somewhere, I guess, a bit bigger, like, that he is able to play a little bit more defensively. I guess he just wanted that short stay because he's like, this is my game plan, right. and, like, that's it. <laughs> I, I, I think he, he's used to, the, the way I saw him play, he's used to being under the platforms on the left and right side of the stage and getting those 0% grabs. He wasn't able to do that. He also seemed to be used to getting the up airs off of a down, or off of a down throw or something like that, that's setting true. up a step ladder. But uh, yeah, never did. able to do that against Giovanni's Fox. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i going to call him out. I'm calling Giovanni, top oh. 24. Call it. Oh, All you right. see, I represent. I'm doing, I got him. I got hey. him. All hey. right. He was actually, uh, last week, I, from what I heard, people were kind of like, a lot of the UCI people were like, oh, man, I wish he came. Yeah. And uh, I believe last week was Rafi, Chump, and like a few others. I busted out at 25th. But, uh, dude. Got some good people there, man. We we got. I mean, if Elegant's coming through all the time, you know, he, 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 even though he wins, he doesn't win easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, SoCal is definitely not hurting for quality players. I mean, every day of the week there is a solid option. If you're not following this channel yet, 2G Game, you definitely need to get on, on get in on that. Follow them on Twitter also because there is plenty of action to be had here. And this this tournament in particular is becoming something of a proving ground because MSM it is attracting is it. those really strong talents like like the Elegance, like UCI showing up. Yeah. Top 24 to prediction at the very least. Just a lot of top quality players. Yeah, I mean, last week, you know, we got Rich Brown here. We got uh, S2H was here. Like, this is the channel to follow, to watch, the Smash channel. Make sure we, got, we, have, we have MSM. We got uh, Wednesday night fights. Yep. We got Hat on Tuesdays. I know a lot. Like we're a bit further, so we don't get Larry as much. But the, he's there on Tuesday with Zen. You get those LA competitions. Hey. So, all right, we're jumping into the new one. We got Neko on Game and Watch and Mr. Shasta at Young Link. Now, Game and Watch. This is a character that I think a lot of people wrote off. But the more you start to check out YouTube, you see some really impressive combos, especially with the up B, the neutral air, even the jab. And so many times, someone gets caught off ledge, and they're out there at the cookout just eating all those sauces. I was it's rough <laughs> at the cookout. I love that. You know, it's funny. I actually never really heard of many Game & Watches until I came here to SoCal. Uh, and he's a character 100% I've overlooked as well. Young Link, everyone wanted him back. One thing you got to watch out for, he has almost no end lag on most of his attack. However, um, unfortunately, he does have he does struggle with a bit, uh, a bit killing, although he has many setups. Well, I mean, what we're seeing so far, Game & Watch looks to be a pretty strong counter to what, at the very least, uh, Mr. Shast is trying to set up. The, oh. the bucket sending the boomerang back, sending yeah. the arrows back. You're used to getting benefit off of that in lag or having next to no in lag. But when it's coming back in your face immediately, you find yourself down stocks. That's true. And the thing is, now that it's a reflector and it's very quick, like, as you can see, Neko here, even if he doesn't shield the boomerang from the beginning or he doesn't reflect it, he still <laughs> reflected on the way back. <laughs> and he's really great at it. One thing Shasta should start doing, in my opinion, is he should start kind of baiting his aerials in the, into forcing Bucket out and how he was able to get the grab earlier. If he can start doing that a little bit more, it might be uh, closer than we think uh, set. You might want to try to rely on the bomb more and time the explosion if he really wants to try to use the projectiles to his advantage. But he has to have the projectiles be more of a plan B, second tier of engagement. He does pick up the stock there. Only down 40%. This is still a very doable game for Shaft. True. Uh, one thing uh, you were going to say with the bomb, while I do agree with that, the one thing is if he does, if, miss, if Neko is basically correctly, he's able to get the splash damage, which would fill oh, his right, bucket yeah. up. Nice, uh, nice cook oh. out there. Nice, okay. He has advantage here. He could even up. Uh, all right, he kind of gave up stable control there. He, he really had advantage. I know he's worried about uh, Game Watch's key, which has a multi hit because it's beginning and then there's a grounded hit. But when he's above you like that, Game Watch doesn't really have many falling options, and Young Link does. So he should try to. Essentially, this matchup is I want Game Watch wants to. Young Link wants Game Watch above him, and Game Watch wants to play the ground. I gotta agree. One thing that we're seeing out of Nico is he's just hanging out there with the bucket, like almost taunting and challenging Shasta. Like, what are you gonna do about it? I think you're all projectiles. But given Shasta that opportunity to wow. come at him is 
what is kind of turning this game around. Shasta is starting to get ahead, 152% racked up, so the bucket gambit not exactly paying off for Nico right now. I was going to say, no way that forward throw is going to kill. Like, I mean, he did DI'd a little bit, but you're 100% right. Like, Neko's kind of like leaving his bucket out there, and now Shasta's like, you know what? If you're going to leave that, wow. Tables, ladders, and chairs. <laughs> Gable, one thing, that's the one thing. Game Watch may not have a lot of range. He does have a lot of knockback, though. Nice. No jump from there. Uh, down smash doesn't really hit off ledge, even if he oh. would have trumped the sweet spot there. Right was that a neutral hair? Yeah, it was near out of shield, but it was, it was like super sweet spot. When you do a startup, like let's say Mario or Young Link like that, when you have the, the very beginning initial hits, have uh, the most knockback for it. We, what we just saw there is I think one of the biggest strengths of Game & Watch, the up B just ends your turn. Yeah. Like oh. it has such a quick startup and it just sends you and Game & Watch up and he's able to follow up off of that with some aerials. Uh-oh. Uh I, uh, I, I missed that. Did he, did he short the up B? I, or just forgot the B button was there? Like, it, he just kind of fell it, off. It's probably the second one. Oh. One thing uh, I was going to say, we, I do agree with Game & Watch's up B in this game also is a lot more, I want to say, potent. Because not only does it always send you at the worst possible angle, aka 45 degrees down or 45 degrees right. up, it, don't forget, Game & Watch get, uh, react instantaneously out of it. And, uh... Like Mega Man, like Sonic, he still can recover with a uh, directional air dodge right. after his up B. All right, he's going Donkey Kong. Oh. Let's see. I, one thing I'm worried about is, while Game & Watch is not really a projectile character, like per se Young Link or Duck Hunt Dog, Donkey Kong does have trouble getting in versus somebody like this. However, if he's spacing back airs and he's able to essentially, not parry, but if he's able to get in and grab those grabs, it might be a different game. Well, we're going to see Shaz to kind of test a different aspect of Nico's play. We saw the bucket get a whole bunch of value with the reflex on projectiles. Donkey Kong doesn't have any of that. He just gets in and starts punching you directly in the face. Can Nico deal with that? So far, the answer looks to be yes. Yeah, I, I agree. Other thing, too, uh, low key. All right, he's going to get the, the young ding dong to tie the game exactly 53.5. Is uh, Donkey Kong is a lot heavier than Young Link. So yes. Maybe he also is like, you know what, if I had 20% more, I could work with something from there. But we'll see. Nice. Uh, that Nair is very dangerous. Like, he has no options coming out of it. Charge, punch, um, all right, it's on deck, it's on deck. If anything, it's just something that Nico has to respect. Right now, Nico does get the upbeat back onto the stage. So far tonight, we have not seen too much contesting off stage. We're going to go for the throw, see if he can get back. Up B, can we wait for it? No, Ooh. he's he, the one thing I do agree with with Game Watch, nice back throw. Throws him in the trash can. <laughs> he's like, you know what, out of <laughs> The one thing you have to watch out for, though, is Game Watch is up. Oh, wow, he got him right before the invo uh, the intangible hit on the up smash. Uh, that might not hit because he's too light. Yep. Uh, okay, I was going to say, back to the original point, is Game & Watch's up B is one of the most dangerous to edge guard. So oh, I guess, yeah. I, so I, I do kind of understand Donkey Kong not, uh, not going out there. However, Neko should be... It should be free for him to edge guard Donkey Kong because Donkey Kong has no hitbox on his up B, so Dare should be always free. Very true. Forward smash there, lowers the shield down, back to the cookout, into the dash attack, 141%. Okay, looks to good. unlock the first stock, okay. misses that, goes to the down smash back. Out, hey. <laughs> Sword, Sword's in the game after all. All right, let's go. And uh, nice stock from Neko. Uh, we're tied in stocks, however, he's down a lot. Remember, Game & Watch is with top five uh, lightest characters in the game. So and anything for any smash attack from Donkey Kong here, we'll take him out. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be, what, two pounds soaking wet? He's a sprite <laughs> by all things considered. I mean, he's 2D. He's a 2D sprite, man, all right? Back Neutral throw, air not just misses. Beautiful grab there by Shast to be able to get around that. Tries to stave off the stage return objection with the back air. Look at me, Popes. Sweet spot back air from there. One thing uh, Neko is doing is he constantly neutrally getting up from stage, and Shast is taking, uh, he, he's taking advantage of that. Uh, a little late on that reaction. All right. I, I want to say a little bit of spaghetti for both players. It kind of just seemed like they were late on each move from each other. But let's see. Okay. This is ideal situation for Donkey Kong. Like I said before, Game Watch has really limited options. And I told you how hard it is. Like, it's got that upbeat. Uh, he could have been the down throw from there. But one thing is, Game Watch, he's trying to approach Ariel. And the thing is, Donkey Kong's attacks are all ranged enough. Oh. <laughs> Watch for the hook. <laughs> and the top. Dude, it actually knocked me back in my chair. <laughs> like, we were like leaning back, looking at the game. It was like, oh. I had to hold you back. Dude, low key, he got the taunting. Yeah. And he got the IRL taunting. It looked taunt. like it hurt. All right. It looked like it actually hurt. That was that super sweet spot, <laughs> man. Right? He's like, you want to go to the cookout? I'm not invited? All right, that's it.
Good <laughs> lord. Yeah. And just like that, we are looking at game number three, ladies and gentlemen. Shasta's Donkey Kong, forced to be reckoned with, it seems like. I knew he was going to go to Smashville. I knew it. The only reason why I knew it is because Game & Watch... Okay, he is going to stay Game & Watch, and he's going to stay Donkey Kong. But one thing is here, because there's not enough space, I want to say, or I want to there's not enough range for Donkey Kong to escape like there is Battlefield. Yeah. I think Game & Watch's cookout is going to have a lot more effect in this game three. I also think that this is something, this is part of the reason why Game & Watch was kind of overlooked at the beginning of the game. Against heavier characters, as squishy as he is, he has some damage potential. He can definitely rack things up with the neutral air and back air, but as far as his raw knockout potential, he struggles. That's not true. And see, this is what I was talking about here. This stage is small enough where area, uh, where up air is enough to have enough pressure for that top platform, in addition to hitting air covering with cookout as well. Oh, I forgot that grounded, to be honest. But he got the weak spot in that forward smash. Unfortunate. But I don't want to say that... All right, now they're both technically at kill percent. So we can... Uh, I'm calling whoever gets first knock here wins this game. I'm calling it right now. I mean, we've definitely seen some momentum shifting back and forth between these two players. It stands a reason Chair is not going to be able to take Shasta out. And Nico's really going for the home run hit with these down airs. I, I, but I, you know the thing is, I agree with uh with Neko going for that because, like I said, Donkey Kong has no aerial, hit, uh, has no top hitbox for his right. upbeat. And in addition, upbeat is not really much of a kill move anymore. Oh, light him up. All right. Get sparked. That means, that means low key. I oh. have to root for Neko because I mean, of my bet. Yeah, you got, you got to keep, you got to keep it 100 there. All right. Uh, he's pulling out the cookout from here. See, one thing Donkey Kong really does not want to do is get stuck on that top platform, bro. Because we from, because from there. I, my breath Let's help? go for a ride. All okay. right. That doesn't kill anymore. You know, be honest, if he wanted to kill him there because of his weight, he should have turned around and uh, he should have been turn around cargo back throw, which would have sent him from an aerial direction and would have killed him off the top at that uh, at that specific percent. Gonna check his tech skills too, bounce them off the backboard and send him off. Okay, that's a one percent air back throw. The shield gonna... and the grab there is, is he's, so he's, much he's value for Shaz. Alright. Oh, he's getting the taunt. I, you know, a little, a little too early. I mean, I'm a man of, I'm a man of taunts, but uh, <laughs> you gotta do something special for that. All right, uh, double nair there. Now he's in a bad position from here. Uh, Game one shouldn't have went for that nair. His up. Oh, oh, mate, mate. There we go. Oh no. In a lot of ways, Shaz is being let off the hook because the vertical game of Game and Watch is absolutely strong, and that's a pretty thick boy in Donkey Kong. Be definitely very can connect those. Down smash sends Shasta off to the side again. Misses the key. Another, Another down, down smash. smash. Nico's keeping the pressure on. Ooh, a little greedy on that up smash. The one thing. Oh, Foyer is going to kill. That has a lot of knockback. The one thing, though, I'm going to say Shasta was lucking out a little bit because those two down smashes, he did not get the grounded hit. However, it, it still ultimately ended in losing a stock. Yeah, if he got buried, that would have been a spark up immediately afterwards. See, now, no gonna jump. Connect and evens up the damage. Right now, Nico's rounding the bend of lapping Shasta in stocks. Okay, once again, like he's using his jump too early, this Donkey Kong, and he has no landing options. Oh, the double dodge. Ooh, up there, beat out the dare from there. That was cute. Yeah, that was don't, cute. You don't contest that from the Game & Watch. <laughs> oh, 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 is it enough? No, 93%. Game & Watch is going to be able to make it back to the stage, but that hook is charged up yet again. He just is looking to do work. Ooh. Okay, he's getting a little greedy there. I don't know why he would go for fair. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't get the spike spot there. The only reason, if people were wondering why that uh, forward smash, that neutral B didn't kill, was he just got nice back there. He got weak spot, essentially. There from there. All right. If Game & Watch gets around 40 to 50, this might be a close game. However, Donkey Kong is sweating. All right. I mean, we Ooh. also just saw that Ooh. sending him up to 93% is not going to be enough for a hook, so it's yeah. pretty much a full stocks amount of damage that Shast is looking for here. And so far, he looks to be up to the test. Oh, I think that was for the swing. I think it's that the grab afterwards. Oh. That could have been it. Oh, my God. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, Neko, uh, a, a little. Oh! oh. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Look at the looks on their face. I, I, yo, I'm shocked.